Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this New Year lesson, we are going to take the New Year theme All Lang Syne. We are going to play the song on all the 12 scales. Now if you if you want to turn off the video, please wait because it's going to be all the 12 scales and 12 different patterns at different skill levels. So think of it as a really good challenge to take yourself into the new year, be it from single chord roots to chord inversions to arpeggio patterns to the blues, which I never leave behind in my videos for the most part. We look at some folk styles, some uh, voicing strategies. We'll also try and make it sound very jazzy and advanced with some secondary chords, diminished chords, extended chords. And then we'll go on and on with things and see how it goes. So it's going to be 12 scales and 12 different styles or patterns or genres, depending on what we'll call it. And we'll also move in a kind of an incremental way. So if you're an absolute beginner, you're still going to be able to play this song. So stay tuned. And if you're an advanced player, still stay tuned. You can follow through. So if not anything, you should be able to play this particular song in as many keys of pretty much the same scale, the major scale. So that's 12 keys. And hopefully all of these different techniques and skills to play on multiple scales will equip you for the new year to help you tackle a variety of music which you will find along the way. Be it stuff you're trying to compose, be it collaborations, covers or whatever it may be. And before we get started, it'll be awesome if you'd consider heading over to our Patreon page. All of the 12 variations are notated, the melodies are there, and even the patterns are there for those that need it. It'll also be great if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So it might be a good start to first start the melody, and then we will move the melody to different keys. And if you see my notes, I'm going to write the melody superimposed with the scale degrees. So you can then use the scale degrees to move it to pretty much any of these scales. Right, so especially for beginners, let's try and develop just the melody line on G major scale. I know you may be expecting C major, but as always, this channel doesn't like C major. Mm. So if you take the G major scale, one sharp, <laughs> F sharp, so let's look at it intervalically as well. I've written it down. I've mapped out the numbers as well as the notes. So let's look at the melody. And if you're a beginner, I'll show you some very simple stuff. You're going to be able to play this. Even if you've been playing piano for about a month or even lesser, you should be able to do this. So line one. So let's get that done. Should all acquaintance be forgot? And never brought to mind. Let's look at the fingering. Now some people also do should all acquaint. So you could do either which way. I'm just sticking with a static G there. So that would be five one 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 D G. And give yourself a couple of free fingers to play the top B. I would play thumb, index, ring on B. It's actually G major in second inversion, so you can remember that shape. A with the middle, thumb middle. All acquaintance be for. Now, second line. So, now take your fingers away from the thumb to allow you to go even higher. So, let's get that line one again. Okay, so let's continue. Now middle finger. Be forgot all the days of all lang syne. So cross your finger there. Whenever we cross, it's always over the thumb, and whenever the thumb crosses, it's crossing under other fingers. Okay, let's do that again.
ओके एंड देन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट वेयर वी गो फॉर वेयर इट्स अ हायर ई सो यू आर एंडिंग द फर्स्ट पार्ट विद द पिंकी ऑन जी नाउ यू वांट टू कम टू दैट पिंकी अगेन ऑन ई सो टू डू दैट एंड जस्ट अप्लाई अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ ट्रिक कीप द साउंड ऑफ जी रिंगिंग बट shift your finger or flip over your finger if this is a problem you also have your nose you can press your nose as well i tend to not do that very often but if it works for you well and good so that allows us to play that high e and then you can finish the song for all the hangs in my dear so you're pretty much in this region let's do that Okay let's finish the piece for all lang same crossover whole melody i'm just playing it with a simple g bass which is the root of the scale it works pretty well still g maybe every 1 and 3 of the bar you can even bring back your thumb under that finger and then you don't have to flip over you can just directly go to your pinky Now let's get some chords going. Before we play chords, why not just focus on the one, the four, and the five roots of the G major scale? The one is G, which is actually a very good representation of the full-on G major chord. So you can do one G, four would be C, five would be D. So let's look at some chords. G, D, which is the five. Back to G. Four, so that G D G C. So look at my left hand. It's G, pinky, D with my thumb, C with my index finger. So maybe we can hold this shape. G, C, C major. Back to G, D. C G one more time Again I am keeping a simple 1 2 3 4 1 You can even do if you want something more punchy I know you're thinking what about chords well that's going to be in the next scale so stay tuned Pulse or minims C G D C And the same chords go with the second part of the melody There we go So that's all Lang Syne on G major. Let's now move on to another scale and play the song on A major. So A major three sharps, namely C sharp, F sharp, G sharp. So let's first get the melody going. As we go further and further, the melody will be notated for you on that scale. So you don't have to rely on what i'm doing i may skip ahead and just focus on the pattern but understand that the melody is there same fingering and you have to write it down on each scale using maybe the scale degree of each note Okay now let's bring in some chord so on A major we are going to add some chord flavor so the first chord would be A major 
which I am playing as E A C sharp. This is the second inversion. That's to give room for the melody. Intense beep. Okay, and then the next chord will be E major, which is the five chord. Back to A major. You can do. You can do D major as uh, F sharp A D. E A C sharp. E major E G sharp B. That's a no normal D major D F sharp A, A D major. Back to A major, so I like this starting inversion of A major. Let's do that again. Remember, I can do either or. A major, D major, A major, E major, D major. I can end with whichever inversion of A major you prefer. Let's do that again slowly. All acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Should all acquaintance be forgot and the days of old land. You can continue also with the same chords. This is A major with chords in the left hand, and the chords are being played as inversions. Inversions ensure for correct voice leading, makes the harmony guide well to the next chord, and it also makes it easy to play on the piano. So learn your inversions, and now let's do B major scale. B major five sharps. All the black notes are part of the B major scale. So what I thought we'll do for B major is bring out probably the most Important or the most famous arpeggio pattern there ever is for the left hand, which could go this one. Let me just show you on B major chord. B, so it's essentially low note, high note, middle note, high note, octave, high, middle, high. So you could even start with L H M H if you. Not able to get that octave. Now add that octave. L M M L H M H L H L. Actually, I write it as L dash because it's the octave of the low note in the first place. Low high middle high low octave high middle high. So a good way to start this would probably be to sing the tune. And keep this arpeggio running. Should all acquaintance be forgot? Da da da, da da da. Or all da da de, da da de do do, do de do do. Okay, let's look at what the inversions are doing in the left hand. B major played as B D sharp F sharp B. The second chord would be F sharp major because F sharp major is its five. But the way we've notated it for you would be starting on the A sharp and then copying the A sharp on top if you want to add the octave to the arpeggio. It provides for good voice leading. For all, should all acquaintance be forgotten? Brought to mind. How am I playing E major? B E G sharp. Okay. Mind. Sure, all acquaintance be forgot. And the days of all anxiety. Let's bring 
in some melody in the right hand pretty much exactly what i sang and an important trick as you're transposing remember your start your first note is not the root of the scale it's the five of the scale so that's f sharp f sharp is the five of b So let's now do all lang syne on C major and what shall we do on C major so let's do it in a blues style it's quite a, a diplomatic thing to do because almost everyone on earth love the blues however there are some people who uh, are obsessed with it so if you don't play it in the blues way they they, they may not even be, be your friend or something so you need to play it always you have to play everything with blues so maybe this will teach you that technique you should be playing anything with blues so a good pattern which will work for you would be take the chord so i'm on c major c major has zero sharps or flats it's c d e f g a b c and uh, the chords will be c major but instead of playing it like this on the piano in a blues style we go One five one six. You can do other patterns, but this tends to make anything sound bluesy. And we would also like to swing the melody. Should all acquaintance be forgot? Ba ba ba. If you don't swing, well, it could also work, but then it'll be more a rock and roll version of the song. So blues is a bit slow and swung. Rock and roll is fast and straight. No swinging. So what are the chords? The same chords. So when you play C major, your pattern will be one five one six. So C G C A. When you play F major, pattern will be one five one six. So F C F D. If you play G major, pattern will be one five one six. So G D G E. So. since you're trying to make it bluesy wherever you have an opportunity you could sneak in a blues scale or play a lick on the blues scale so if you take the c blues scale major blues scale c d e flat e g a c where does the melody not exist you know where does it slow down for all the Squeeze it there. With blues, it's also nice to slide a few notes in the melody. make the song pretty bluesy so that's about a blues version of the new year song 
Let's now do it on D major. D major has two sharps, namely F sharp and C sharp, right? So what we are going to do for D major is I'm going to introduce you to a couple of folk ideas, a couple of ways to make the song sound like a folk song. So let's first play it with the D, with the chords and the melody, simple version on D. So let's now start arpeggiating the chords. So one way to convert this into a very folkish sound would be Let's say Let's say you want to play it very close With your thumb of the right hand You could add another note of the chord So if it's D major like this You're adding this extra note, which is not a new note, it's it's still D. It's part of the same chord. So and it doesn't come a uh, combat or clash with the melody. So it adds that folk 16th note articulation. Let's get that one line together. I'm sure you can do the rest. Left hand's doing L H M H. Okay, so continuing. You could also use octaves in the right hand along with that groove one more time this without that without that thumb uh, ghost note as we call it it sounds back to normal but with the ghost note it sounds kind of like a banjo player playing right now that's one way to develop a folk style on the piano with these um, right hand 16th uh, articulations with the thumb you can also do some scale movement in the left hand alongside the right hand. So, so you could kind of keep a fifth chord bass in your left hand. You could also add thirds. So you're not thinking of chords. You're thinking of just thirds. So harmonic movement is actually more melodic than chordal, so to speak. So if I just float around the scale... in thirds
So this folk style, you don't really even need chords. You don't have to play D major, G major. A. You're just thinking melodically, actually, like a counter supporting melody to the right hand. So let's now move on to E major scale. E major, as we know, has four sharps: F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, D sharp. So let's just get quickly acquainted with the melody on E. What shall we do on E? Let's play all the chords in a spread style. So spread chord will allow you to play a lot more deeper. If you observe our earlier versions, I had all of the stuff on the higher side because the chords, the notes of the chords would clash. So on E major, I've specifically chosen this spread shape. So let me explain that. So if you take E major chord. E major chord normally we play it as E G sharp B, but in the spread position it will be E B G sharp. You take the third and move it up the octave, so it gives you a lot of room for the notes to breathe, and it also gives you a, an opportunity to play the melody on the lower register of the piano, which I personally like. So you get. So that's your B. You can go all the way down here and play B. So the pattern is three, four, one, two, and three, and four. You could go one and two and three and four and one and. Or if you want something a bit simpler, acquaintance be forgot and the gun. I'm sneaking in an E seventh there. Slowly get in some chord sophistication. So E major, E seventh. How am I playing E seventh? E, D, G sharp. And all of this we are trying to do with the sustain pedal on because the gap is a lot on the keyboard. So, so acquaintance B B. Tara E na E seventh na A major. E, na 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 B, na 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 A, na na ang sine E. So don't forget that E seventh chord which is in there. Let's play it with the tune. Seventh. That spread chords, which is a very useful technique in the left hand. Moving on to E flat major, where the challenge for you is to say bye bye to the left hand and get the whole work done in the right hand. And after the right hand already sounds pretty good, we can bring in the left hand to add more depth. So E flat major, three flats, namely E flat, A flat, B flat. Do not call them as sharps. They it's a flat scale. E flat, A flat, B flat. So let's first get the tune real quick. Okay, that line should do. Now, the challenge here is step one: be able to play the melody in the right hand with not more than these two fingers, because all the other remaining fingers have to do something else. So. Ring and pinky. Get used to playing it with just those two fingers first. And what are the remaining notes going to play? Well, the chords, but inverted chords, so that 
the top note is going to ring as the melody so that's e flat major but the melody line is singing e flat so i have to invert e flat so that e flat sticks on top to play it i'll do g b flat e flat Shifting my inversion, B flat major, new chord. So ta ra ra. I don't have to harmonize that. I just have to wait for the actual chord to come, which is E flat na na B flat mm mm ah ah E flat pa 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 E flat pa E flat pa 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 B flat pa 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 ba A flat pa 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 E flat so. your ring finger and pinky finger are playing the melody still don't forget that e flat you can add the 7th and then a flat e flat b flat a flat e flat Seventh, you may think, where's the rhythm gone? Well, the rhythm's not gone anywhere. We 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 just didn't add rhythm. So we can add maybe a simple arpeggio. very banjo like and once all that is done in the right hand your left hand can just play simple simple chord roots your left hand your left hand can also groove if you are able to maybe generate a simple groove like this what we are calling as chord melodies in the right hand so a good exercise would be to maybe practice the e flat major scale in just melody with chords like check that out i'm playing either the 1 4 or the 5 chord which goes with each melody note on top that's ta na 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 so there we go so whatever is at the top ultimately becomes the melody okay so let's move forward to the next scale okay so let's move forward to the next scale b flat major we just have a few more to go We're almost done with our twelve, our set of twelve. B flat major has two flats, namely B flat and E flat. So let's get the tune going first with basic chords. B flat one, B flat, B uh, F, E flat, B flat. So what's the pattern here? At the end of the day, you want to serve or suit the modern day audience or generation. So what better to do 
then the thresio or the dance style. So I'll show you that with one chord on the B flat chord. So what's the pattern? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So let's try and get the tune with this. First, sing it. Papa, all acquaintance be forgot and never gone to da na 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 na. For all. So the pattern I'm doing in the left hand is I'm playing the root of the chord first always, and then adding. The other two notes, B flat remaining, B flat remaining. Pattern would be sixteenth notes dividing by four, one E and a two E and a three E. So melody coming up. For this variation, you can play the chords in root position. This pattern will definitely test your hand coordination. To take Thresio a bit forward, you can maybe play the song clave rhythm, which is. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a and now. So to take this a small step forward, instead of doing the thresio, we can play the song clave, which goes one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. continues so you can do either the thresio or the song clave and make the new year theme sound very modern you know pop and very dance like in nature moving forward so let's now do f major and now it's time to create some interesting harmony all through we've just been doing the 1 4 5 chords so let's look at some options so this is for those of you who know Chords in general, how to shift between them. Uh, some knowledge of seventh chords would be helpful, or follow along. You'll definitely gain something, or at least you'll find the concepts interesting, and you can apply it over the year year to come. I'll play it and then show you. Let's break that down. First of all, F major one flat, namely B flat. So the melody, once you've got it uh, under under the right hand, you can go F major. I'm playing the <clears throat> relative minor D minor seven, which is a great kind of substitute chord for F major. For all acquaintance, especially when you do a D minor seventh instead of just a Straight D minor. For all acquaintance, B. I like that sus in there. I wanted to put in a sus chord. B for that C sus. B for God. That's a nice connecting secondary diminished chord. That's a C sharp diminished seventh. Let's do that line. For F major, D minor seventh. C sus four, C sharp diminished seventh. Instead of C sus four, you could also do a a G minor seven. That would make it a bit more um, a mellow, I guess. I like the sus so. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on. Do. Come back to maybe a D minor. Adding that F seventh there, which is the tonic seventh, secondary dominant of the four, which is B flat major seventh. And then a connecting diminished chord. B diminished seventh with a D on top. Okay, let's uh, do the first two lines together. Sus diminished D minor seventh F seventh B flat major seventh there has that A connecting secondary diminished chord B diminished seventh last time let's do that again slowly. F major, D minor, C sus, C sharp diminished seventh, back to D minor seventh, F dominant seventh, B flat major seventh, B diminished seventh, and moving forward, one of my favorite slash chords, F major slash C. So C in your left left hand. All I could. D minor. D. Now we are doing a two five. La la la. That's G to the C. You can do a G minor seventh. Da na. C seven. Two fives work a lot in uh, rearrangements. Da da. Chords again. Ta -da. That's F over C. Ta -da -da. D minor seventh. G minor seventh, which is the two. Ta -da. I'm playing a C seven, but I'm also adding the nine and the eleven in there. La, oh, four. That's a connecting secondary chord. A seventh over C sharp. Four. a nice connecting chord b flat over c you can do it like a four at the word for if you're repeating it which i think you are at least once four play a c augmented chord four c augmented Let's do the whole thing again slowly. F major, D minor, chords changing faster, diminished, D minor, dominant, but diminished seventh, F over C, minor seventh, minor seventh, C9 sus4. A seventh over C sharp, D minor, B flat over C, C F. This definitely adds a lot more emotion if you think about it than the earlier versions where it was just one, four, and five. So those are just kind of survival chords. These chords can bring the emotion out of the theme or the lyrics of whatever you're composing, especially the secondary chords. The when you add extensions, when you add more chords rather than just the 1, 4 and 5, right? So that was kind of a reharmonized version on the key of F major. We have three more scales. Let's finish them off really quick. I guess you've got the gist of this and this is a lot to practice over the new year ahead. I hope you're all going to be at it and we will continue to release videos on our channel with all these subtopics as well. And you can also leave us information in the comments as to what you need to learn or what topics would interest you we'll be sure to plan some lessons around that so let's journey forward into d flat major
D flat has five flats, namely D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, B flat. All the black notes. So. So, what shall we do here? We can play a technique which I like to call as double arpeggios. So, what do you do in the left hand? Play that old arpeggio technique which is LH, MH, LH, MH and in the right hand we go Remember the technique where I told you play the melody and the harmony together in one hand? Well, that technique is there. The speed of that arpeggio can be double of the left hand. So then the notes will never clash. Rather, they will add beautifully well. This is what you could call as double arpeggios, double-handed arpeggios. So, And just off the top, you could practice this drill. Left hand could go L, H, M, H. Right hand could go H, L, M, L. They are counter to each other. So they add some nice harmony to each other. And what if the right hand plays double of the left hand? Now you get some rhythmic flavor. Now bring in the squeeze in the melody. banjos playing together now so that's uh, what the piano can do you can do a slow arpeggio here so just in a nutshell slow arpeggio left hand and then fast arpeggio in the right hand the left hand arpeggio starts from the bottom L right hand arpeggio starts from the top H so Very powerful technique for players. I use this a lot when I'm playing solo stuff. And if you spread out your left hand chords more, it'll sound even more richer, right? So that's about Old Lang Syne on D flat major. I think we are pretty much done. Or maybe we have a couple more. Uh, F sharp major. Let's look at F sharp major. F sharp major has six sharps as the textbooks tell us. Even though there are five black notes. So it's a bit tricky to understand theoretically. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, uh, C sharp, D sharp. We call this F as E sharp. You can ignore it and just call it F. That's also fine. So... So you could ignore that E sharp and just call it good old F. So F sharp major melody. So to embellish this or to harmonize this, the approach I have, which we haven't discovered in the other chapters would be just add thirds to every note you play in the right hand. For all, all is at the one, right? <clears throat> so you write down your F sharp major scale in a line. Under that, you can write down the thirds and you should get some options of, uh, to stack up the melody. For all. There we go. And the left hand could pretty much play the roots of the chords. It doesn't have to do anything great because the right hand is already creating most of the chordal harmony. Can you 
even add close thirds. So there are two kinds of thirds. You can play the upper third. But then that sounds very high. So instead of playing it there, we play it that note. We bring it down here. You can also do the lower third and play the harmony that way. Or the lower third is also called as the alto harmony. While the upper third is also known as the tenor harmony. Which you don't play above the soprano. We, we try to move the tenor back down. There. Tenor. Alto. So just choral harmony using thirds can be enough to harmonize all Lang Syne. You can just ignore the chord progression. Just follow thirds and see how that goes. So that's F sharp major for you. And last but not least, we have the key of A flat, A flat major. Let's look at that. A flat major has four flats, namely A flat, B flat, D flat, E flat. That's about it. So on A flat, I thought we leave it as an open playing field to kind of destroy the song in as many ways as possible. It should kind of sound like it, but it's more a New Year wish you want to send to annoy someone or maybe just use it as an exercise to push your skills, you know, and just transform the song. What are all the ways you can destroy this song? First of all, it's on 4x4. Four four. I don't like that. Let's make it 3x4. Let's see how that goes. So, so we are on A flat. 1, 2, 3. So your job is to somehow squeeze the notes within this wall structure. time signature in your brain with a basic pattern try singing it or humming it maybe 7 would be better changing and messing with time signatures you can do something a bit more subtle by messing with the time feel you're not messing with it you don't even know what it was in the first place so if you have come back to 4x4 four four, let's say now my mind is dividing the beat into two so the time feel is just quavers but why not maybe look at semi quavers where you divide by four one E and a two. So in your brain, you're looking at all those four semi quavers for every beat. There we go. What if we swing those semi quavers? There 
de Vigo. What if we decide y divided by 2 or 4 will divide by 3? It's still a 4 by 4 song, but the beats are being divided by 3. Maybe you could just imagine um, a, a horse galloping and try to follow that, like duk 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 duk. So all of this is what you could call as a time feel. So you could do that. You could change the meter, and then you can completely destroy it if you want to change the actual scale in the first place. So what's the easiest scale to go from major to to minor, right? So how is major and minor different from each other? The minor will have a flat 3, a flat 6. The harmonic minor would have a normal 7. Natural minor would have a flat 7. So all you are doing is uh, uh, changing those intervals. So instead of... Which is a C, that's a major 3rd. I'm doing a B, which is a minor 3rd, also known as C flat. E flat minor. It's a nice exercise to kind of transform, it will train your theory as well. Right? And you can have a lot of fun doing this. The the ways to create your own versions of songs would or would be these radical things like meter immediately it's your own version for sure time feel immediately it's going to be your version and then you're changing the scale the scale itself is going from happy to sad so you can make these subtle differences or even some serious differences like we saw now for the a flat major scale right guys so that was old lang syne the new year greeting song which most of us hear across the globe on all 12 scales and I've tried to kind of scale it up for different skill levels on the piano. So you may want to go through parts of this lesson. We've put chapter markers in the description that you can go through to, you know, you want to learn it on G, you can hit G, C and so on. So try to use our chapter markers, try to get the notation on our um, Patreon page and don't forget to stay tuned to our channel. You can do so by hitting that subscribe button turning on the bell for regular notifications. And uh, <clears throat> as we are doing this lesson around the time of the new year, thanks so much for all of your support. It means a lot and you have inspired us to keep going strong. And we hope that you will also keep going strong along with your family and other loved ones in the coming new year. Practice your piano hard and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.